Welcome back to the best Android apps of the month, this time for July 2025. All right, first up, go touch some grass. No, really, this first app is literally called Touch Grass and it's based around that idea. It'll lock you out of your most addictive apps until you actually go outside and snap a picture of your hand touching real grass. And nope, you can't cheat. It uses AI to check the photo and make sure it's legit, not some fake turf that you have, none of that. It's also super easy to set up. You can create routines to block certain apps during specific times, like while you're working, or you can tell it to lock certain apps after they've hit a time limit. Honestly, even though it sounds silly, it works. It helps you stay away from your phone, doom scroll less, and it lets you become a lot more productive too. A pretty interesting way to help you get some fresh air. Next, I know most of us are using QuickShare by now to send stuff between Androids or Windows, and while it works, it's not always flawless. Sometimes it's not able to find the right device that you're sending it to, and other times the file just doesn't end up sending. And forget about using it with iOS or Mac, because it doesn't even support those. Now, I know a few of you are probably yelling at me and say, just use local send, but I've had issues with that as well. That's why I switched over to this new app called Transfer. It's free, open source, just launched a few weeks ago, and honestly, it's already been way more reliable. It works over your local Wi-Fi, just like QuickShare, but it also sets up a mini file server that you can access from any browser. Just type in the IP address that's found within the app onto your browser, and boom, you get this clean drag and drop interface to send stuff to your phone. You can also send files from your phone to your computer as well, and even share clipboard text between devices. No cables, no cloud stuff, no mobile data, just Wi-Fi, and it works. And hey, that's just two out of the 15 apps that I got for you for this month's episode of the best Android apps. As always, I'm a one-man team finding all these underrated apps, no researchers, camera team, editors, it's just me. So if this video helps you download at least one app, please just give this video a thumbs up. It truly keeps me motivated to bring you this monthly series at the first of every month. Maybe we can even beat last month's 6,000 likes. Who knows? Either way, let's move on to the next app. You know what's annoying? When you get a login code via text or email and your phone doesn't automatically copy it within the app that you're trying to log into. Now you're stuck memorizing numbers like it's 2005. That's why I started using Copy SMS Code. It's free, open source, and way better at picking up those codes. It scans your notifications, grabs the code, and either copies it straight to your clipboard or gives you a little notification where you can tap to copy. The best part is that it works with any app, not just texts or emails. Just a heads up though, if you're on Android 15 or above, you'll need to turn off this enhanced notifications option in the system settings to get it running properly. Or if you're more techy, you can use ADB and punch in this quick command that's on the screen to give it a special permission. Either way works. Also, just a random note, only a tiny chunk of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed. So if you're still with me and enjoying it, why not hit the subscribe button with the bell? It's totally free and you can always change your mind later. That way you won't miss out on any future app videos just like this one. So earlier I talked about touch grass. You know, that app that locks you out until you go outside and touch the green. If that's too hardcore though, try out Grease Milky Way. Instead of blocking apps entirely, it just hides the most addictive parts. Like on YouTube, you can block the shorts button or even the video recommendations under a video so that you're not tempted to fall into that black hole of content. It can even hide all those unnecessary features that you don't really use. Like on WhatsApp, it can hide all the AI features and the random channel recommendations. And you can even go extreme with it. Like on Instagram, you can just strip it down to just DMs. No stories, no reels button, no videos or photos in the feed if you don't want them, just your messages. Still, as you can see, it's not perfect. On bigger items that move a lot, such as posts within a scrolling timeline, you'll definitely see the screen flicker a lot more since it's really trying to figure out what to hide in real time. Personally, I would only use it to hide small things that are static, like the Reels button at the bottom tab, or just the stories. It makes it a lot more usable. And since this app is still new and free, I think it's off to a great start, and I'm sure they're gonna add more apps in the future. This next one is more of a niche pick, but it's clever. It's called Alternate, and it basically gives you a second contact list outside of your main one. So say you've got random numbers calling you that aren't actually spam, but you also don't want to add them as a contact since they'll clutter up your main contact list. Like a delivery driver, a contractor, or a business you're really only dealing with once. Well, you can add them to Alternate instead. 
That way, when they call you, you can still see who it is, but your main contacts stay nice and clean. It's a small thing, but if your contact list is getting out of hand and you're starting to get a lot of repetitive names, making it a bit more confusing, it might just be what you need. So these days, there are a ton of AI assistants out there, right? And we've all been there where our main one just doesn't give us the answer that we expect, so we end up trying another. And to be honest, the constant switching between apps can get pretty annoying. That's where Rika Hub comes in. It puts all your favorite AI models in one spot so that you can easily switch between them instantly. As you can see here, I've got ChatGPT, Gemini, and DeepSync all lined up, and I can even pick between different language models for each one. And those are just my picks. Rika Hub actually supports a bunch of other providers that you can choose from. And yeah, you can still upload files or photos to ask questions about them. Super handy. Just a heads up though, you will need to plug in an API key for each AI provider, but the app shows you exactly how to get those. It's super easy. PC gamers, this one's for you. GDeals just dropped last month with only 100 downloads so far, and it's easily been the best way to find game discounts. It pulls deals from all the major stores, including Steam, Epic Games, GOG, Humble Store, you name it. You can also filter all the stores, and there's even a free tab for games that actually became free. Plus, when you tap on a game, it shows you everything about it, including reviews, release dates, screenshots, what platforms it's on, and of course, where to grab the deal at the bottom. And here's the kicker, it's totally free. No ads, no in-app purchases, just a clean, simple way to save money on games. Okay, check this out. I used to hate holding my phone forever when watching videos or hopping on calls, right? But now I've got this MacFlip wallet, the sponsor of this video, and dude, it's a game changer. It snaps right onto the back of your phone, Mac safe for iPhone folks, or if you're an Android like me, Subcase even includes a free magnetic ring in the box so it works just as well. But here's the cool part, it flips into a stand. It's super handy when I'm at the park or just hanging out with friends and want to watch a video. If I need a better angle, no problem as well. I can also detach it and boom, tripod mode. And if you're a content creator like me, or thinking about getting into it, you can even use it like a mini tripod for handheld recording. Seriously, it works better than I expected. But it doesn't just stop there. This thing also doubles as a wallet. There's a smart little card slot built in so I can carry my ID and a couple of credit cards without lugging around my old chunky wallet. And yeah, it's got RFID protection and a metal lock cover to keep everything safe and scratch free. There's even an AirTag version if you want to track it as well. And despite all of that, it's still super slim and tough, so it doesn't bulk up your pocket. So if you're looking for an all-in-one wallet, stand, tripod, card protector, and a tracker that fits right in your pocket, you've got to check out the MagFlip from Subcase. And hey, use the code in the description for a 15% discount. The purchase link will be down below as well. Okay, so this next app has a wild name. It's literally called Don't Break My Balls, or DBMB for short, not kidding. But it's actually a super useful tool. Once you turn it on, it silences all calls from unknown numbers, allowing only your contacts to ring through. That's it. No battery drain, no fuss, just peace. And you'll still be able to see the missed calls in your call log in case you still need to call someone back. Honestly, it's perfect if you keep getting bombarded with spam calls. This next one is for rooted users only. So if you're not rooted, then just skip ahead to the next app. It's called No Wake Lock, and it gives you way more control over the apps and services that are secretly running in the background and draining your battery. It shows you which apps are wake locking your phone, basically keeping it from sleeping, what alarms are being triggered, and which services are constantly active. But here's the magic. For each app, you can literally block its wake locks, alarms, or its entire services. So if one specific app is being a battery hog, you can just shut it down completely. It's next level control for your background processes. I'm not gonna lie, I've been looking for a good habit tracker app for a while now, one that's simple, clean, and not full of ads or junk features, and I think I finally found one. It's called Habit Ricks. Here's how it works. You just create a habit, like working out, drinking water, whatever, set how often you wanna do it, like three times a week or once a month for something like a haircut, pick an icon, and then save it. Then each time you complete that habit, you can just tap on the check mark. Over time, you'll see this nice little checkerboard showing your progress. It's super satisfying to look at. If you go pro, you can even unlock stats and graphs for each habit. And there are widgets too on the home screen so that you can mark stuff right then and there. 
I even dropped 100 promo codes for it on my Patreon so that you can unlock it for free. Huge thanks to the developer for providing these. It's not the most feature-packed tracker out there, by the way, but honestly, sometimes just keeping things simple just works better. Summer's finally here in the States, and I'm sure you'll have plenty of family and friend get-togethers, so you can use Pool Suite to set the perfect summer vibe. It's basically this retro radio player that just plays some feel-good summer tracks and some chill mixes straight out of the 90s. I usually just have it going in the background when I'm with company. It's like having your own personal DJ that just plays some amazing summer vibes. And the UI looks amazing too. It's super nostalgic and just feels different in a really good way too. A great app to kick off the summer. Okay, so this next one's more on the nerdy side, but super helpful if you're an app hoarder like me. It's called SDK Monitor, and it basically tells you what Android API level each app on your phone is targeting. Why does that matter? Because it gives you a quick look at which apps on your phone are actually being updated and keeping up with Android's latest features, especially for things like security and privacy. It also shows you which apps are just way far behind, still targeting ancient SDKs, which probably means that they're not really being updated as often anymore. When I see that, I usually just either find an alternative or just uninstall it. Next, we have this calculator app called Incognito Calculator Tools. Just kidding, it's not just a calculator. I mean, it does work as one, but once you type in this code 1234 and hit enter, it unlocks this hidden menu. Inside, I can stash away private photos, videos, take secret notes, uh, record audio in the background, use a secret incognito browser, and if you go pro, you can even record videos secretly while your screen's off too. Obviously, use all of that responsibly and legally, but it works really well. I even dropped 100 promo codes for it on my Patreon thanks to the developer, so go snag one there. This next app is called Arrow, and it's honestly pretty unique. It's a navigation app, but here's the twist. There's no map. Instead, you just type in your destination, and once you start, the app shows you a big arrow pointing you in the right direction. It also tells you how far away you are from that place in either kilometers or miles. Now, I know what you're thinking, why would you use this instead of Google Maps? But it can actually come in handy in a few situations. If you're walking around a big city where the GPS can get a bit tricky, or if you're out hiking on a trail with no roads, sometimes a simple arrow is all you need. It works offline too, and barely uses battery, and it's super easy to use. It's by no means a full replacement for your usual GPS app, but it's a cool tool to have for those times when you just need some basic direction. Do you remember how the Pixel phones have a screenshot app that lets you easily organize all your screenshots? Well, I found something even better and it works on any Android. It's called Shot Studio. It's free, open source, and does an amazing job of organizing your screenshots. On the Pixel phones with Pixel screenshots, you get some automatic filters, sure, but with Shot Studio, you can create your own collections and it still uses Gemini AI to smartly sort through all your screenshots and put the best ones into the right folders. Like I made a collection called Gift Ideas, turned on the smart categorization feature and it really scanned all my old screenshots, pulled out Amazon product screenshots, stuff from websites and dropped them into the right collection. It's not the most flawless thing, but it is somewhat accurate. You can also search your screenshots by what's in them, not just by file name. It even generates tags for you. Honestly, it's one of the best tools that I've found so far for keeping my screenshot mess under control. Anyway, click on this playlist right here to binge watch all the best Android app episodes in the past months. Or check out this one to learn about a new phone that Oppo released with amazing new exclusive features. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Drop a thumbs up if you download at least one app and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!